Okay, so we'll get started then. So um, coming to lie down on the mat, um, and also welcoming anyone who's joining for the first time this morning online. <coughs> um, we're going to be doing about an hour class this morning, exploring Zen yoga practice. So as we're lying down on the ground, just relaxing, resting, And just checking in with how your day has been so far. So everything we do has an effect on the body. So we could just ask, well, what's the effect of your day so far been on your body? Maybe you're hot, maybe you're cool, maybe you're tired, maybe you're very rested. Maybe you feel really heavy, maybe you feel quite light and bubbly. Just lots of things we can notice inside the body. And we've been looking at a series of, um, I don't know, like attitudes or characteristics <laughs> that uh, Zen encourages us to cultivate. They're called the six parameters. They underlie most of um, Mahayana Buddhism, Buddhist practice. And we've been, this is, so this is number four, the class number four in the series. And today we'll be looking at the characteristic of virya. Virya means energy or effort. So we've looked already at number one, dana, which means generosity or giving. And then we looked at shila, which means ethics or morality. And then last week we looked at um, uh, kshanti, which means tolerance or patience. And today we're looking at this fourth one, energy. Energy, effort. So maybe on the very broad brush level, we, it's just more about tuning into the energy side of things. Just as you're lying here, what kind of level of energy would you say is running in your body? Like, would you say we're quite low in energy today, or would you say it's quite high in energy? Maybe on a scale of one to ten, where would you put yourself today? So we're just going to be aware of the energy side of things as we begin to move a little bit. So if we bring the hands, palms face down by the side of your body, and then you'll feel your fingertips touching the mat, touching your yoga mat. We're going to slide the hands down towards your feet and feel your fingers sliding along the mat towards your feet. And your arms go really long, and then with these long arms, we bring them up to the ceiling, reaching upwards towards the ceiling, and then carry on going right up over the top of the head, until your hands are close to, maybe on the floor, give yourself a nice long stretch. So really including the whole body, legs, feet as well, in this long stretch. Maybe even take a nice deep breath in, have a good stretch, and then as you breathe out, bring the hands up to the ceiling and then bring them down to the side. And just let your hands come to rest. And now ask, so what's the level of energy in your body now? Has it changed? Can you notice a difference between a moment ago? Okay, next time you breathe in, we'll take the hands up to the ceiling and up over the top of the head. And as you breathe out, bringing the hands back down to the floor. So we're going to do another four breaths like this, coordinating breath and movement. Breathing in, arms lifting up over the top of the head, long stretch, and then breathing out hands coming back down to the floor. So moving at your own breath rhythm, coordinating movement and breath. And then once you've done those four breaths, you can just let your hands come to rest back down to the floor. And then again, you can ask yourself, well, how has that changed the level of energy in your body? Has it changed? Does it feel different? Maybe it's changed in its quality, in its, in its feel. 
rather than the level. So breathing in, hands coming up over the top of the head. Long stretch, include the legs. And then as you breathe out, this time bring the hands in front of your legs, just hovering in front of your thighs. And then we're going to reach down towards the toes, let that reach, lift the shoulders, lift your head. So we're now looking at the toes and reaching towards the toes. You'll feel the lower back here pressing down to the ground. And we're here. So this is just engaging a little bit of energy in the body, a little bit in the center, bringing our attention down into the middle. In the middle, in Japanese, they call the hara, the hara, the belly. And this is our energetic, physical center of the body. So another two breaths. Pressing lower back into the ground. And then breathing in, hands lifting. Take a nice long stretch. And then again, breathing out, hands hovering over the legs. Reaching towards your toes, letting the head come up off the ground. Looking at the toes, bringing the hands a little bit over the right leg. Right leg lifts in between, holding onto the back of the leg. And then let your head come back down to the floor. I'm going to press this right heel up towards the ceiling, extending into a little bit of a stretch. So the other thing about energy is, I suppose it's very equivalent to what in the Eightfold Path they call right effort. So what is right effort? It's the effort which is appropriate or helpful, beneficial. And it's the level of energy we're putting into our practice which feels like it's going to make it our yoga rather than something else. So that is all about kindness and curiosity and exploring. Okay, so we're going to bend this knee, right knee, kind of two hands around the right knee and bring it down towards the chest. And as the knee comes in towards the chest, make sure the straight leg stays really flat to the ground. And just take a little moment to ask, so what's the level of energy which feels appropriate here, the level of strength pull downwards? What feels good? And then if we take the knee and just the right hand, so right knee, right hand out to the right side, and moving out, opening out the hip a bit, and then moving it back to the center. Yeah, so we do two more times. So move the knee out to the side, and then back to the center. And then last time, move the knee out to the side. Then as it comes back to the center, we use the other hand to bring the knee across the body and down towards the floor, and at the same time, stretching out the right hand at shoulder height, to provide somewhat of a counterbalance so the knee can move down to the floor while we're opening and twisting in the other direction out towards the right side. And again asking, so what's the right level of energy here to put into this particular twist? Am I gonna be really soft and relaxed? Maybe that's what my body really needs. Or maybe I'm going to just ease into it a bit more, a bit more, a bit more, until we find that sweet spot. And then one more breath. And then we'll rest back into the center. So roll back into the center. Both legs out long, hands down by your side. Breathing in, the hands lift up over the top of the head. Nice long stretch. Breathing out, hands hovering over your legs. Reach down towards the toes, let your fingertips lift the head up off the ground, and then we'll bring the hands a bit over the other leg, and we'll lift up. So left leg coming up, holding onto the leg, letting your head come back down to the floor, and it's like, oh, hello, hello, left leg. Yeah, press the heel up, heel up, toes back towards your body. Now, when I say that, it's not about really push, 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 it's about just asking, well, how do I move the heel up towards the ceiling while still staying really in touch with what my leg is saying, what feels an appropriate level of movement here? Okay, we're going to bend this left knee, two hands around the knee, and bring it down towards the chest. Make sure the straight leg stays flat, pressing down to the ground. And then if we take the knee in just the left hand, moving out to the left side, opening out the hip 
and then back to the center. So two more times, out to the side, and back to the center, out to the side. And then as it comes back to the center, using your other hand to bring it across the body and going over into the twist, left hand out, shoulder height. See if you can keep your left shoulder attached to the ground as your knee moves across and over towards the floor. If you like, you can turn your head to look away from the knee. And just breathing with this here, finding the comfortable right effort place. So in the way that the uh, Eightfold Path is written, it uses the word right, which is not right or wrong, the correct effort, the incorrect effort. It's more like the, the right effort for you in this moment, which is going to help move us away from suffering. One more breath. And then we'll roll back into the center. Both legs out long, hands down by the side. Breathing in, we lift the hands up over the top of the head. Last time, long stretch. And then breathing out, hands to hover over your thighs. We're gonna reach down towards the toes. Here we'll just take a little pause here with the lower back flattening into the ground, looking at the toes. And just take a little moment here. So attention, energy, awareness coming into the belly. Two breaths, if that's okay. And then we're gonna see if we can come all the way up to sitting, using your fingertips as the guide to reach, 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 and see if we can keep on going using a bit of elbows if necessary, yeah. Okay, good, bending the knee. We're gonna come all the way up to standing. One way I like to do this is to roll backwards and then roll forwards with enough momentum to come all the way up. So that's an option. If, if you wanna have a go at that, I'll just show you how it goes. And coming up to standing. So that was, you could try it out. Or just come up to standing any other way. It's one of those things we do like semi-regularly in the classes and it's quite nice to know over time, you know, maybe over the months or something like that, how does it change? You know, does it get easier, harder? Is it something happened? We got stiff back, blah, blah, blah. It's one of those things to, to kind of keep track of. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so another form of energy that we're going to tune into is this sort of centered quality or grounding and that uh, in... In Zen, they put a lot of emphasis on the belly. So we're going to do a breath work, breath practice, which is about bringing our attention and energy into the hara, into the belly. And we're going to use a sound. So on the in-breath, we have an open mouth and we go, <gasps> like a sort of gasp sound. And then on the out-breath, we close the mouth and make a low sound like, mm. my voice is not so great. I kind of lost it a bit this week, so it's just coming back to normal. Anyway, we make a mmm sound. And as we do that, we're bringing in energy and awareness into the belly. So let's bring the hands onto the front of the belly here, just crossing them over. Maybe close your eyes for a moment and just listen in to what it feels like with the breath and the awareness here in your belly. Maybe you can even feel the belly moving with your breath. So much of what our energy is all about is where our attention is. You know, if we're thinking, if we're worried, if we're distracted, then the energy is up high. But if our awareness is down in the belly, in our body, it's down low, we feel more grounded and centered. Okay, so let's try one breath with the sound and see how it goes. Okay, so nice breath in. <gasps> Close the mouth and then... Okay, so that's how it goes. Now, what we want to try and avoid when we do the breath in <gasps> is to go up too much. Okay, so it's the breath actually goes out in the belly, not up into the chest. And then when we're breathing out with the long, slow mmm noise, feel free to just have a little lift in the pelvic floor, just as a sense of like squeezing in. Okay, so something to just be aware of. Yeah, we're going to do three breaths in the, uh, next. Okay, so breathing in. <gasps> 
One more. <gasps> Good, okay. So we've got the front of the belly. We've also got the sides and the back of the belly all the way around. So we're gonna do some, just carry on going around the, around the, 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 side, um, the whole of the belly. So we bring the hands to the sides. Something similar goes, when you breathe out, have a sense of kind of squeezing in from the side, squeezing in from underneath, and squeezing in with the breath. So it's like everything comes into the center, okay? So three breaths on the side. Breathing in. Good. Okay, sliding the hands around to the back. Here, this is slightly harder to feel. The muscles and tissue are, are kind of stronger around here, so we don't get so much movement, but nevertheless, we can still feel the energy coming into the lower back, back of the belly. Okay, so three breaths. Breathing in. <gasps> Last one. <gasps> so really squeezing in all the way, front, back and sides into the center of the belly. And once you come to the end of the breath, let your hands just come to rest by the side. Standing tall, eyes can be closed if you like, breathing normally. Keeping your mind centered in your belly. So it means really noticing the feeling of the breath feeling in the center of your belly. Good, eyes lifting. So we take the hands forwards and up. Have a nice look up to the ceiling and reach upwards towards the ceiling. And then with this long body, if you feel comfortable to let the hands drift a little bit behind the body, but then what we're gonna do is just try to bring some attention here. Keep the attention in the belly. The belly will be having to work in order to hold this posture. So right up underneath the ribs, down into the lower belly, just kind of really noticing the level of energy coming into the belly to work holding this posture. Two more breaths if that's okay. Good, and on the out breath, we're gonna come into a forward bend. So let the hands just come down, gently, gently folding forwards. Let the hands, head, shoulders relax, hanging down. Now we're gonna really relax the belly. So really soften, ah, really relax. So a soft, relaxed energy has a very different feel to a strong, engaged energy. Good. Sliding the hands up the legs, coming all the way up to upright. Okay, coming down into all fours. We're gonna bring the hands underneath the shoulders and the knees underneath the hips. So square shape underneath the body. Fingers facing forwards. A little bit, bring the weight forwards in your hands and let your head drop down. And then press the hands into the floor and arch the back upwards, so rounding the back up towards the ceiling. 
Now you might also get a notice of how the belly works in this position here. Now once the, you've got a nice arch, moving the body backwards all the way back towards the heels, as far as things will go, and then we'll drop the elbows to the floor, looking forwards, slide the body forwards until the head comes in between the hands, and now look up and lift the chin to come all the way back to upright. Yeah. Okay, so head down, arching the back, and moving the body backwards all the way back towards the heels. Drop the elbows to the floor, look forwards, come forwards until the head is between the hands, and then come up, back to upright. Okay, so just carry on like this. Okay, mm -hmm. Okay. nice. And then coming back, next time you come back into all fours, just coming back into all fours. Good. So lengthening out the posture slightly. So slightly take the knees back a little bit or the hands forwards a touch. Similar thing, so arching the back, moving backwards. Maybe we can't go all the way to the heels this time, so it's a bit long, but that's okay. Drop the elbows to the floor, and this time we're going to slide forwards and come beyond the hands, just a little bit beyond the hands, and then we're going to look up and come all the way up into a kind of cobra position here. Yep. Okay, arching the back, moving backwards towards the heels. Now, if you find having your head very close to the floor as you slide forwards quite challenging, just have your head up higher, maybe have straighter arms as you come forwards and up. Yeah. Arching the back as we move backwards. And then snaking forwards and looking up. Yeah. Arching the back as you move backwards. Forwards and up. Okay, we're gonna do two more. Nice. Silly thing. There we go. Okay, nice, good. And then come back to all fours. Okay, so tucking, if, so if you feel this is okay and working for your body, what we can do is the next level is tuck the toes, lift the heels, and then do something similar, okay? So we move from a down dog, we move forwards, and then we come down, forwards and up, okay? So you may want to drop the knees, come forwards, take it nice and gently. We're moving backwards and upwards into down dog. And then forwards, down and up into a kind of cobra position, yeah? Maybe doing three or four or five, maybe something like this in this movement. Now, if this feels like it's getting a bit strong, come back to one of the previous versions. And when you feel like you need to, you want to rest or finish, just come back into all fours. Okay, we're gonna take the right foot now, stepping it between the hands. 
Nice long step forwards. Grab hold of the foot, please maneuver it forwards as if you need to. You untuck the back toes and just come up into a moment onto this uh, uh, resting on the knee here. Just checking that we're sinking nicely in a lunge and we've got the knee directly over the foot. That's it, that's the idea. So taking the hands forwards and up. A little bit bending the elbows so we come out broad and wide. Letting the hips sink forwards and down as we look up here. So taking here the left hand, palm face up, and then we'll hold the underneath here with the other hand and moving it over to the other side. So left hand is moving over the top of the body. And you may be able to sense of something happening along, all the way along this, this left side of the body. Maybe if you like looking up towards the ceiling, if that's good on the balance. Two breaths. Okay, hands coming up and then coming down. Now we're going to be here a little bit of time with the knee on the floor. So feel free to make a little bit of extra padding for the knee. Double over the mat or use whatever you've got handy. Okay, when you're ready, the hands coming up. So we're going to twist from one side to the other. So let's turn towards these windows here. Bring the hands down to shoulder height. So out wide, and then we come up to the ceiling, hands up, and then we come over to the other side, hands down to shoulder height. Okay, so up to the ceiling, and then twisting the first direction, and then up to the ceiling, and then turning the other direction. Good. Breathing in as the hands come up, breathing out as the hands come down. Breathing in, and breathing out. Now we're going to do this a little bit more time. I'd like you to determine for yourself the right effort, the right amount of energy to put in to this movement. If you want to pause, stop, go slower, take a little rest, this is appropriate for you, then you just go right ahead. If it feels your body wants to carry on doing this, just go right ahead, yeah? So this is one of the most difficult aspects of our yoga practice is knowing when to stop, knowing what is a right level of energy. It's easy to push and go beyond, it's much harder to stop. So if you're okay, maybe a couple more. And the next time you end up facing in the direction of your knee, we're going to bring the hands down. One hand crosses the front, the other hand comes around behind, wraps around behind, and we'll just keep on twisting here, turning, turning, as far around as feels good. So making sure the breath is nice and steady through the ma uh, nose, if that's the best, if that works for you through the nose. Okay, one more breath. And then we'll bring the hands up and down. So we can un undo the mat if it's been underneath you. Tuck, so lifting the back knee up off the ground. And we're gonna shift the body weight forward so we bring the, the balance into the front foot. And if it's, so here's a challenge for you if you wish, okay? We're gonna see if we can bring the front foot, swing it through and up into a balance here. Or you may want to do that in stages, just as touching the floor, bringing it up, okay. Maybe holding or having the hands out for help, just for a moment. Focusing the eyes on the floor, something that's not moving. Bringing the sole of the foot in to the inside leg. Can be low down, it can be higher up. Just feels like whatever's gonna be comfortable. If you lose balance and drop away, and drop the foot down, no problems, yeah. And if you feel okay with the hands out, we can just experiment with bringing the hands in. So here we have a level of energy which is much stiller, which is more concentrated, right? So we have to really focus on the balance. and We have to really feel the foot on the floor and this rooting, grounding quality. See if we can do four more breaths, if that's okay. Nice. 
nice. Okay, and then we can release and release. Good. Have a shake around. All right, so we're towards the front of the mat. Breathing in, hands lifting. Bending the knees, hands to your thighs, slide all the way down to the floor. This time taking the right foot, long step back, and bringing the back knee down to the ground. So now we're in a lunge on the other side, right? So just come up on the front knee, and as we sink into here, here we wanna make sure we've got this alignment. So you probably wanna bring the foot further forwards a bit. That's it, there we go, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we want to have this nice stability, basically, for the ankle. Yeah. When you're ready, hands coming up. Bending the elbows, just coming broad and wide. Nice open front of the body. And here, the right hand now, palm face up. Left hand just holds underneath and helps it over to the side. And we listen in. Hello, side of my body. Hello, front of my belly. Good. Two more breaths, leaning over as far as feels there's going to be right effort or helpful energy. And then we come up to the center. Good. Hands, we're going to turn towards the other, well, either direction, either direction first. Hands down to shoulder height. And we bring the hands up to the ceiling and over towards the other side. Okay, so with the breath, breathing in, arms up, breathing out, arms down. Breathing in. Now, the other thing to notice is the level of twist and lunge that we find with each movement. So we could really sink low and turn far, or it might just be for your body that that's, we want to be a little bit more gentle, and we're working on the strength component is already quite a challenge. Keeping in tune with your breath, keeping the breath Moving steadily. Breathing in, arms up. Breathing out, arms down. So remember, you pause. You just stop if you need. I often say to people, it's a sign of an advanced student to stop. It's very easy to push and go beyond. But you might find this within your capabilities, very much so, in which case we just carry on. Yeah, maybe another th two or three rotations. And the next time you end up facing your front knee, turning towards your front knee, then we'll just pause here. Front hand comes down to across the knee, back hand reaches around, twists around, it's kind of like wrapping around the back thigh. Other hands, that's the way. And then we turn, turn, and look around as far as feels good. Breath is nice and steady. Two more breaths. Good. Next time you breathe in, hands up, and then breathe out, hands down. Okay, here's so we tuck the back toes, lift the back knee, and here's the challenge. We step forwards in pieces, or in one whole long go, forwards and up, swinging up into a balance here. This is hard work for the hips and the legs, yeah? Start off with the hands out for helping, maybe holding the knee, and then just when you're ready, we bring the sole of the foot in. Again, it can be wherever is comfortable, yeah? And then we let the energy go in and down. Maybe four more breaths, if that's okay. And then we can release and release. 
Okay, have a little shake around if that's going to be helpful. And then we bring the feet just underneath, feet hip width apart, standing nice and tall, hands by your side, maybe closing or just lowering or closing your eyes. Just asking, so how does the energy feel in your body? The energy can be in terms of blood, so we could feel the heart and we could feel the pulse. That is a form of energy, the blood flow. It could be in terms of like tingling or it could be weight. It could be heat. Good. Eyes lifting. So we're going to do a little bit more with our balance uh, posture. Um, <clears throat> so if we bring the weight across to the right side and then just let both legs bend, and we just sink down. Okay. Now what this is doing is helping the energy, attention, awareness sink into this right foot. And what we do is press down with the foot to lift up. Yeah. So it's a press down and the body lifts, and then the sole of the foot's going to come in. Now. It is okay to have it on the knee. In fact, it's quite a nice fit around the knee. As long as the knee is not locked and then it's very weak, as the knee is bent, then it's okay and strong. But you can have it higher or lower, just depends. Yeah, Using your hands for balance. So we're gonna gradually lift the hands and then we're going to see if we can lean away from the bent knee in this direction. If you feel okay with the balance, you can take hold of the wrist like we were doing and lean it away from... So we're holding left wrist and we're leaning away from the knee here. But you're very also welcome to have the hands out wide if that helps with the balance. Or please feel free to come close to a wall or a piece of furniture to hold on to or just touch lightly. That also helps. So as you lean, we're pressing the knee down and away and creating length down the side. Three more breaths, if that's okay. Focusing. And then we come up and release and release. One of the nice things about these yoga mats is that as soon as you lift up your foot, you see your footprint. Not all yoga mats do that. And it's actually, it actually reminds us just how much our feet have been really working on the mat and creating that balance. And you sort of think, so our, our little one, maybe I mentioned this a bit last week, our little one's now just coming up to a year, he's 11 and a half months, and he's just started to walk around the house, you know, with his holding on and uh, waddling around. And you sort of look at the body shape, and it's a big head, and it kind of goes into these little tiny pin legs and the tiny feet. And you think, well, our body shape is different to our little babies. You know, uh, proportionally, we have a smaller head and bigger body, and he, he's going to be growing into that. But, you know, to be able to balance and walk around and stand up by himself on these tiny little legs requires an enormous amount of coordination and energy and practice, you know. And here we are um, as an adult, and uh, we still have really quite tiny feet compared to our whole body and it's just a, a, one of those miraculous wonderful things that we can do what we do on just one foot and it works hard for us you know in order to create that so let's go over to the other side left side and sinking down yeah we sink down into the floor we press on the floor to lift up and then here we're in our balance yeah so then integrity and strength down the leg is important. We keep the knee bent. In fact, it can be quite a lot bent. It's quite hard work on the muscles, but it keeps strength and integrity, making sure that the leg is in where it needs to be. Yeah. Please feel free to be near to a wall or piece of furniture or using your hands where you need. Yeah. When it feels like we've established the balance, the hands can lift. And then we're going to gradually lean our way away from the bent knee. Yeah? As soon as the head goes off the vertical, it becomes infinitely harder to maintain that balance. If you want, turn this time the right palm 
and we're holding on to it's coming over the top. Focus. Breath. It can be really frustrating and that is also a form of energy we just notice. Four more breaths if that's going to work for you. And then we come up, release, and release. And it's like, oh, look, my foot. <laughs> yeah. That one, I think, does that one work? Do you get a footprint? I think it's a bit thinner, that one. A little bit. A little bit, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Okay, so again, standing tall, maybe just lowering or closing the eyes, tuning in. So what's the level of energy in your body? How is it? So it may be have gone up, maybe it gone down, but also it may just feel different. Does it feel more centered? Does it feel low in the body or high in the body? Does it feel like it's expanding? Does it feel colorful? Good, eyes lifting. So let's come down to sit on the mat with the legs out in front. So I remember when I first started practicing yoga, if someone asked me, is my energy colorful? I probably would have walked out of the room. So here we are, 15 years later. <laughs> so let's take the right leg out long and bring the left toes tucked in. Mm -hmm. So we're going to, first of all, lean down along this long leg here. So we'll take the right hand out along the leg. Feel free to bend the knee if that's easier for you. And we'll just start to lean down in that direction. Yeah. Think about the side of your waist and your shoulder and the side of your head coming down. Now, if that feels okay, you might want to take the other hand up. It can be useful to have the other hand as a bit of extra just coming over the top. Or you might find actually with the hand up, it's a bit like, oh, it's too much work. I quite like to just rest here on the side. So, you know, as you wish, as feels good. If you feel good, you can even turn to look up towards the ceiling. That might help the side of your body to rest down towards the leg. So another level of energy that we can tune into is the contrast or the, the um, uh, the balance between putting in energy and relaxing. And it's, it's a continuous practice to ask what is the right balance in each posture, in each moment, in each part of my life? Do I need to put in energy or do I need to relax more? So what's it, what, is, what is it for you just here? And it's one of the things, I, I can't tell you that, is that I'm, I'm, stand, I'm sitting here at the front of the class, but it's not something I know about your practice. Only you can determine that. What's the right level of energy to put in or the right level of relaxation? Now, as we sink a little bit deeper, you might find the, this right hand the elbow wants to come on the inside of the leg. If it's going to come at all, it comes to the inside of the leg. Maybe that's helpful. Maybe that's just not helpful. Let's take five more breaths here. The right level of energy versus relaxation. And then breathing in, we come up. Now the hand that's lifting in the air is going to come across the body to the outside of the long leg. And we're going to twist and look over the right shoulder. So here we've got a forwards movement, a forward bend towards the leg, but we've also got this twist. We were doing this a bit last week, this, this posture. Turning, looking over the shoulder.
So here, can I find that balance between, or in fact, do I need to put in energy and effort, or is it really more about relaxation? Do I need to relax, or is it really all about putting in energy and effort? Or maybe even there's a middle place, somewhere where we have energy and effort, but that energy and effort is also very relaxed. Three more breaths. Okay, and then we gently come up to upright. Mm. So we're going to twist over in the other direction. This time we're going to let the long leg roll down to the floor so the, the sole of the foot is, or the big toe side is down the floor. We're going to keep on going over the shoulder. Now as you turn here, this right hip is going to come right across the center of the body and we're going to feel a, a, a sense of length here in this long leg. And it might just be that you can come down to the hands or maybe the elbows as you twist and look around behind. Yeah? So just maybe not straight away onto the elbows, but just kind of moving in that direction and see how far your body wants to go. Keep the long leg straight and the, uh, uh, the hip rolling and turning. So I'd say it's probably one of the most important lessons we learn in our yoga practice, which is very applicable out in the everyday world, is knowing how to sustain the right level of energy and effort whilst also staying relaxed. Sometimes people feel putting in energy creates tension, hardness, but actually we can stay soft and pliable, resilient, bouncy, springy, whilst also putting in that energy that's necessary. Here we practice. Three more breaths. And then we slowly start to come up and come back to the center. And then we're going to switch over the legs. <clears throat> so we first start by leaning the side of the body down by this long leg. Yep. So again, feel free to have a bend in the knee if that makes it easier. Just resting down, coming into it slowly, gradually. Maybe including the other hand if that that's going to be helpful. If we come in a bit too deep, too quickly, then what the body does is get worried and it tenses up. And then it becomes a, quite a bit harder to gradually let it trust that what you're doing is okay and it can relax. So we can maintain that relaxation by coming in slowly and maintaining the trust with your body, the trust with your like unconscious protection mechanisms that you're not going to injure yourself. So continuing to ask, what is the right balance here between putting in effort and energy and then relaxing? Maybe it's a real turn to face the ceiling with a real long upper arm, or maybe it's a really soft, kind of like letting gravity do the work. We're totally passive.
three more breaths. And then we'll slowly start to come up. Okay, now the hand that's lifting up in the air is the one that crosses over the front of the body to the outside of the long leg. And we begin our second movement. So sliding a little bit down the long leg and then turning to look over this time the left shoulder. Remember coming in slowly. So just starting the stretch or the feeling of the movement and then just maybe easing gradually further and further with each breath. So we also get to notice the ebbs and flows of our energy from day to day, week to week, month to month, year to year. And our yoga practice is one of those times where we can really just notice and check where's our energy today Necessarily, it will go up and down. You know, we're in this time of the year, the springtime here in the Northern Hemisphere, where the energy of the nature, the world around us is rising. And that can have a strong influence on the inside of our body. But also there's, you know, other influences. Three more breaths. And then we can slowly start to come up. Okay, and then we come all the way around in the other direction. Just take it slowly, no rush. This long leg rolls down to the floor, foot on the ground, and then the hip here, left hip, starts to come across the body, lift up and come across as we turn, turn, turn in the other direction. And then take it slowly, maybe two hands on the ground, maybe the elbows come down, whatever you need as you twist. So when we lengthen out through this long leg and the heel, the side of the knee, side of the inside of the hip, this is our liver energy line. Comes up into the groin, front of the belly, and then out to the ribs. There was a famous Zen master in our lineage, Zen master Hakuen, who practiced so strongly in his early years, his 20s, he put in so much energy that he basically depleted himself of his internal energy and got very, very sick. And we these days call it, he got chronic fatigue. And then he used these kinds of practices for internal energy work and awareness and gradually regained his energy. And he wrote that in the later times of his life, 60s, 70s, he said he felt he had more energy now than he ever did in the whole of the rest of his life, his 20s. So it's possible to find that for ourselves. Our energy rises as our life goes on. You know, we have this idea that it has to go down. You know, it's all a long down, downhill slope but it doesn't have to be that way. Three more breaths. And then slowly starting to rise up, come back up. So we're gonna to come to lie down on the mat now. So maybe just if you wanna put on socks or jumpers or extra layers, now will be the time. Otherwise, just coming to rest yourself down onto the mat. (coughs) 
So as you come to rest onto the mat, making any movements you need to make sure you're comfortable, shifting your legs, your arms, your hands, your head, just make sure you're really resting. Now we finished the, the part of the class where we're, we're putting in energy and now we're really focusing on the relaxation side of the seesaw. So physically we're relaxing, but mentally or internally, we've still got that awareness and that presence Softening the eyes. Softening your jaw. Your mouth. Softening the arms, the hands, the fingers. Softening your belly. So all this work we've done, especially at the beginning of the class, in bringing awareness energy into the hara, into the belly, that can do its work even when the belly is relaxed. Maybe now there's a, a kind of concentration or gathering into the center of the belly. So we're looking at our fourth of the six parameters, virya, or energy, energy effort. Exploring, noticing energy, moving energy in the body, and then the balance between putting in discipline and energy, and then relaxation, softness, and how actually the two sides of the seesaw can come together in a kind of relaxed but pliable energy. One of the important reasons to notice that the body has this quality of energy is to realize that actually we're not a fixed thing. We're not a thing at all. All the way down to the atoms, the cells, the components of our body are made of energy. We realize that we're not a fixed object. We're a flow. We're a, a dance. So as we come towards the end of our practice together today, if you've been joining us together on the Insight Time app, you, if you're willing to offer a donation in exchange for today's class, it's easy. You can just click on the Donate button. So all of us, let's bring a little bit of movement back to the body. Maybe taking a, deep, taking a deeper breath, perhaps starting to wiggle a little bit into your hands, your toes, rolling the head ever so slightly side to side. And then just when you feel ready, rolling over onto your right side. Noticing that 
little lift of energy in the body from something very relaxed and still to having to move just even the slightest. And then once you've had a breath or two, engaging the energy just a little bit more to come up to sitting. So hands coming together in front of your forehead. Take a little bow to honor your own practice today. Coming up here, making this diamond shape on top of the head. We're gonna lay it over the crown, coming out to the side, gathering some space or energy, bring it into the chest. We bow to the energy we've made together, practicing together here in person and over the airwaves. From the chest, we go forwards and down towards the floor, bowing and saying thank you to our teachers and all the people in history who have passed things down for us to learn today. Coming up. Lovely. So thank you, thank you, thank you, and thank you very much. Yeah, mm, nice.